and welcome to all of you who are joining us now by live stream. I will make this announcement. We'll be offering the sacrament of Holy Communion. It will happen at the conclusion of the regular service today, which we are recording. This is because we're not allowed to record communion. It's a ritual that we share in real time. So we invite you, if you're here for drive-in worship, to just remain in the parking lot following the benediction and threefold amen. And then just keep listening to the radio. We will move immediately to the communion liturgy. If you're watching on Facebook Live, we invite you to just stay on our Facebook page and join the live stream of communion there as well. We begin, as we always do here at Trinity St. James, with the affirmation, God is good. All, all the, the time. time, and all the time, God, God is, is good. good. Part of God's goodness is the gift of Sabbath, and that is the theme for our worship today. So as the candles are lit and the bell chimes, let that call us together. Let the Sabbath begin. May you leave behind the burdens of the week. May you rest in God's steadfast love. May you renew your strength in the company of others on this sacred journey. And for those of you who can't see in here, the candle lighter went out, and so it is being relit, and we're grateful to Charlie Goodnew to serve as our acolyte today. As our worship begins, I invite you to listen as Betty plays our prelude, and then we'll move immediately into our opening song, The Little Brown Church in the Veil. The words are printed in your bulletin.
our opening prayer this morning. Almighty and everlasting God in whom we live and move and have our being, you created us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Grant us such piety of heart and strength of purpose that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will and weakness from doing it. In your light may we see life clearly and in your service find perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the scripture reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. I somehow lost it in the bulletin, but we do have a children's time today. So while Chuck and Buddy are getting ready, I want to say thanks again to our worship team. For those of you who can't see the voices, uh, we have Betty at the keyboard, Steve and Lisa Goodnew doing technology, Ron Duffy, Chris Swizer as ushers, Dave Sunberg on recording, uh, you saw Charlie light the candles, and Lisa Goodnew, Heather Domer, and Christy Sunberg are serving as our song leaders, and Christy's was the voice you heard as the liturgist. We are so grateful to this team for all that they do so that all of us can enjoy and worship in this Sabbath time. So Chuck and Buddy, we are glad to hear from you this morning. Well, Buddy, just think, it's another beautiful Sunday morning. It finally quit raining. I know, that's the reason to praise God no matter what. Jamie and I had a talk this week, and she told me that her message today was about the Sabbath. She got me thinking. Yes, I know, if I'm thinking, that's usually dangerous. But she got me thinking about what my Uncle Bill taught me when I was about Charlie's age. That Sunday was meant for two things, family and God. And he always taught me that Sunday mornings were meant to be with your church family in God's house, praising and singing his praise. Sunday afternoon was to be resting and or being with your family. And the more I thought about it, you know, it makes sense. We're, we have two different families in this world. We have our church family, which we get to see every Sunday when we, things will be back to normal. And we have our own families, which we see every day, but we don't take time to do stuff with. Yeah, I agree, buddy. Things would be a lot better if everybody took Sunday and spent time with their family. But we live in a world we can't do that. And so it got me thinking about how, what my own, did with my own parents and I did. Sunday mornings were 8 o'clock church, 9.15 Sunday school, lunch, and then during this time of year, football season. Which meant dad and I would turn on a football game and we'd fall asleep on it. Then, as I got older things became different. When I got in high school, we would have play practice or something like that on a Sunday afternoon, which maybe not been the best time to do it, but it's when everybody's schedule worked. But we still spent time with friends and family. Yeah, and, and this trying time right now, buddy, we, family is more important than ever after this year. Let's face it, this year has not been the easiest on everybody. Yes, I know, it's Everybody will be celebrating when January 1st gets here. But on a day of rest, or resting doesn't have to be necessarily resting, resting. Like if you're helping your friends and do something, a special project needs to be done. To me, that is rest. And going for a walk, is taking you for a walk would be a very well rest. But that's another time. So before we leave, I think we should ask everybody to take time today and remember, there are two very important things about Sunday. Number one, we celebrate God, 
And number two, our families. Yes, I hadn't forgotten about the prayer yet either, okay, bud? You ready for a quick prayer, buddy? Dear God, we ask you to continue to keep us safe. We also thank you for the many gifts you've given us. This beautiful sunrise, the beautiful music we have today. For our friends and family who, let's face it, without them, we are nobody. So until we can all meet again in person, we ask you to keep us safe. Amen. Thank you, Chuck and Buddy. Sabbath is a special day. Sabbath gives a particular rhythm to our lives. And so I invite you to begin moving into a rhythm of word and song as we'll be alternating. We'll sing a verse of our hymn, Near to the Heart of God, that which we long to do on the Sabbath, a reflection, then we'll sing another verse of the hymn. So I invite you to join in the first verse of Near to the Heart of God. It's in your bulletin or on page 472 if you have a hymnal. to the heart of God, and yet that nearness comes in so many different ways. It came to me one day out of the blue, a phone call, watch your mail, a gift is coming. And I'm thinking, what is it? Why are you sending it to me? Why now, especially because the caller was my son-in-law's father, somebody that I know, I like, we are beginning a friendship, but certainly not someone I know particularly well, and there was no special occasion that I was aware of. And he's an attorney. So I was particularly surprised when he told me what he was sending. He said, it's a book that has meant a lot to me. It's helped me immensely, and I want to share it with you. The book was titled Sabbath by Wayne Muller. And that book has helped me immensely as well. I don't know why he was moved to send me this particular book at this particular time, and I found myself wondering, how did he know I needed it? The gift. The gift was a book, yes. The, gof the gift was... Friend, family, yes, but most of all, it was a gift from God, the gift of Sabbath. The book begins like this. In the relentless busyness of modern life, we have lost the rhythm between work and rest. In the relentless busyness of this time, of making a living, of caring for loved ones, of coping with a pandemic, of cleaning up after storms, of getting ready for a new school year. I look around and I see people working so hard. And some days I have to wonder, have we lost the rhythm of work and rest? Muller in this book reminds us what God spoke to the people long ago in the Ten Commandments, the rhythm of creation. 
of day and night, of seasons of growth and seasons of dormancy. The Bible tells us of God's rhythm of creation. For six days, God worked, God created, and then on the seventh day, God rested. And we know that there are rhythms in our bodies and rhythms of the earth. Tides come in and go out. Our hearts beat, but there's a rest between beats. We inhale and then we exhale. And in our faith, there's a rhythm too. And you, people of Trinity St. James, whose faces I am imagining filling the chairs in our sanctuary, have helped show me a rhythm of faith. And the words I would use this rhythm that you have shown me are receive and reflect. And I, I think that's our mission. We know the official mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. But how we do that, the way that we make disciples of Jesus is to somehow receive the love and goodness and grace of God and then reflect it back to those around us, reflect it back to the world so in need of that steadfast love. It's the rhythm of faith, the rhythm of life, and the rhythm of Sabbath. Work and rest, receive and reflect back. Both parts are necessary because they make up the rhythm of life that God set for us. So remember the Sabbath, God said. Remember the rhythm that gives us life. So I invite you now to join and we'll sing the second verse of Near to the Heart of God. of comfort sweet that sometimes we all long for. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's a comfort in that. And I know that weary and heavy laden can mean a lot of different things depending on each unique circumstance. So it means things from physical effort and long hours to grief and anxiety and sorrow. Whatever the need, though, Jesus understands that need for rest, for comfort, for healing. And Jesus himself knew about returning to God for rest. In fact, multiple times in the Gospels, we read that Jesus went away to a quiet place to pray. He went to pray. And one translation of those words in the Bible, to pray, is to come to rest. And I think we are invited in Sabbath to come to rest in God. Sometimes rest is harder than one might think, though. Theologian and Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann says, that the creation story in Genesis in which God rested on the seventh day makes clear that God is not a workaholic. Furthermore, God is not anxious about the functioning of creation because God set creation in place and then rested and let it carry on for a day. 
the message is that the well-being of creation does not depend on endless work. And if God can rest, surely we who are God's creatures can and even must rest. But Brueggemann takes it one step further and points out also that we must make sure our neighbors can rest as well, that all can find that nourishment, that place of comfort, that place of renewal near the heart of God. And this is not a selfish rest. Rather, it's a rest that restores. I loved some of Chuck's descriptions of how to spend the Sabbath because rest might look like a nap, and in fact, that is one of my favorite Sabbath activities. But it may also look like a shared meal, a walk by the river, a Zoom movie night with friends, making love, playing music, listening to your child, delivering a gift to a neighbor, whatever it is that draws you near to God, that restores your soul. It's about letting go of the the pressure that we often feel, I think, in this culture to produce or consume, to get something done, and rather to enjoy the gifts that God has already given us. When we receive the gift of Sabbath rest, we are renewed to return to the work of our lives with more to offer. I have found, and I've heard it from some of you as well, that when we remember the Sabbath, the whole week goes better. I think that's true because it's part of the life-giving rhythm that God provides for us. So remember the Sabbath. Remember to rest. Remember the rhythm that allows us to receive the good gifts of a loving God so that then we might reflect them back. Now let's sing one more verse, verse 3 of the hymn, Near to the Heart of God. this day of rest, this time of rest, this hour of rest, whatever it is for you, what next? Well, we get back to work. Whatever our work looks like, whether it's paid or unpaid, physical or mental, caring or praying, cleaning or tending, creating or rebuilding, analyzing or problem solving, whatever it is, in whatever ways God has opened to us, we are contributing That's our work. One of the things I love about this book, Sabbath, is Muller's perspective on humankind. He says that people are naturally generous. The instant we are filled, our first impulse is to be useful, to be kind, to give something away. I see that day after day. And... I believe that as we look around and the places we see that not happening, it's because people are not filled with God's presence and power and spirit. And we know that there are also many people who are not filled. They don't experience God's love and goodness, at least not enough. Sabbath is not only for us, it is for all people and all creation all that need our care. 
So when we wear ourselves out, whether that's physically, we work our fingers to the bone or our bodies to the breaking point, or when we wear out our spirits until they are dry and empty, the world misses out on something it needs. It misses out on the gift that each one of you, each one of us can give. We can't serve the neighbors God calls us to love if we are dry and empty. And so God gives us the gift of Sabbath, the Sabbath rhythm, the rest that refills us, and then the work of serving, reflecting, even laboring, so that as we receive, we then naturally reflect God's love back to those around us. This is the rhythm of Sabbath. And Muller suggests for us a simple way to practice this rhythm every day in a series of Sabbath moments because we know that some people are working on Sunday mornings. We know that sometimes people's lives are so full with, with caregiving and, and immediate needs. A full day can seem impossible. But the rhythm of Sabbath, of work and rest, is possible for everyone. I do believe that. I believe that God offers that. And so this is what Muller suggests. Bless strangers. Bless the people on the street or at the store, the mail carrier, the bus driver, the kids zipping around on their scooters, and do it secretly, silently, whisper to yourself, pray the blessing. Pray for them. May you be happy. May you be at peace. And as you do feel the blessing move through your body as you offer it, trust that both you and the one you bless benefit from this tiny act. Notice how each small blessing can become a Sabbath moment, a tiny experience of that rhythm of work and rest, of receiving and reflecting because multiplied over and over, small blessings mount up and they can transform the world. So on this day, remember the Sabbath. Remember the blessing and gift of God. Remember the life-giving rhythm. Receive and reflect God's goodness and love. Let's pray. Eternal God, on this Sabbath day, renew our bodies as fresh as morning flowers. Open our inner eyes as the sun casts new light upon the darkness. Deliver us from all captivity. Like the birds of the sky, give us wings of freedom to begin a new journey. As a mighty stream running continuously, Restore justice and freedom day by day. We thank you for the gift of this morning and the beginning of a new week to work with you. And now we pray together as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Walter Brueggemann also has a book on Sabbath called Sabbath as Resistance. And in this book he says, we sing the hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, but maybe we should be singing, Take Time to Be Human, or maybe just take time. Sabbath, he says, is taking time, time to be holy, time to be human. So I invite you to listen and sing together the first verse of this hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, as we remember the Sabbath.
I invite you to listen now as Betty plays our postlude. Then I'll offer the benediction. We'll share the threefold amen. And if you just stay put, we will go immediately then from the threefold amen into our communion service. Now may the presence of God, the creator, give you strength. May the presence of God, the redeemer, give you peace. May the presence of God, the sustainer, give you comfort. May the presence of God, the sanctifier, give you love. Let's conclude with the threefold. Amen.